Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This week Space Dandy surprised us with a big homage to mech anime and showed us what happens when you eat expired ramen. Also, Meow is totally the mega of the series now. Shut up, Meow. Quick shout out to Izzy Goggin. She was one of the random winners from my Miyazaki Anime Club. She got to choose a future topic of discussion and she chose Inuyasha. I'll let everyone know when that's gonna happen later this week, but be sure to give her a high five. All right, so let's eat some expired products. I'm gonna start with my top five moments, then I'll do my review. Number five, the point card. It really was the only reason he went back to save Meow. I can only imagine how much money he spent there to earn all those points. It all worked out in the end, but did you notice that the cash they got for the Opai monster, it's the same money from Cowboy Bebop. Let's take a quick poll. How many visits to Boobies is it gonna take for him to spend all that money, and will he be broke again by the next episode? My answers are one, the first visit, and yes. Number four, don't touch the mac and cheese. The expired food really reminded me of college and stale ramen. I'd like that they try to include some science whenever they talked about how old it is. QT says he got the deal by ordering it from the edge of the universe, and he didn't pay for a warp delivery, which means it took thousands of years to arrive. Whenever you're looking at images from the Hubble telescope, because some of them are so far away, some of the images are from thousands if not millions of years ago. This makes me think of two things. One, how did QT place that order? And two, I love how timey-wimey they get with the laws of physics. Doctor Who shout out. Also, raise your hand if you've ever eaten uncooked ramen in a moment of weakness. Don't worry, no judging here. Number three, the op eye monster. You will never look at space boobs the same way again. Who else knew right after we saw the teaser from last week that she would turn out to be the monster? The title kind of gave away the whole thing. A couple of big questions I had after this were, what other forms could the monster take? You know, they kind of make it sound like it adapted to whatever prey it was stalking. And two, why hadn't it eaten all of the indigenous life forms yet? I really did love their voice once Dandy started using the Universal Translator. Number two, Meow Respawn. Given the events of the last couple of episodes, I think we can safely assume that Meow will just respawn in the middle of whatever their zombie adventure next week is gonna be. They are totally C-labbing it and I think it's awesome. If you are a completist and you just have to know what really happened to Meow after the last episode, he would have been thrown up whenever the monster ate that expired ramen. So somewhere on the planet, he's lying in a puddle of that stuff. He definitely was still not inside the monster's stomach whenever Dandy collected the reward, but it is a funny thought. Speaking of which, I am still totally waiting for Dandy to hook up with Scarlet, but it seems like nothing in the universe impresses her, except for maybe a good fight. Maybe if he just showed her the footage from the mecha fight, she would go out with him. And my number one moment, Hawaiian shirt mech. I totally got a Conti Fooly Cooly vibe from the mech. The fact that it was wearing Hawaiian shirt was just icing on the cake. The fight sequence was actually really good, but since the show references a lot of different anime tropes, I don't expect there to be a big fight sequence in every episode. One thing that we haven't seen yet is an epic space battle with Dr. Gel's fleet. They might be saving something like that for the finale, so I'm really hoping that it happens. Let me know what your favorite moment was in the comments below. Was it the Opai monster? Was it the Steel Ramen? Was it all the Meow hate? And let me know if you caught any other references to other anime series that I didn't list in the video. I really liked the episode, and clearly the high point was the mech battle. The series does a really good job of paying homage to anime tropes and making fun of them at the same time. You know, thus the Hawaiian shirt. The only thing that's really disappointed me so far has been the lack of secondary characters in the narrative. I know each episode is supposed to stand alone, but if the Dr. Gel arc can run across all the episodes, then why can't Scarlet acknowledge things that happen every week? Be sure to let me know if you think that she should become part of the crew at some point. Right now she runs the alien tagging space station, so we'll probably see her almost every week, but it kind of bums me out whenever it seems like she's completely ignoring any past interactions she's had with Dandy. As for Dandy himself, I'm starting to think of him as more of a space version of Archer, except without all the things that make Archer a badass. If you're not watching Archer, this should be a subtle reminder that you should probably check it out. Next week is Telepathic Space Zombies, which totally sounds awesome. Be sure to subscribe to get my video, and remember future Inuyasha Anime Club coming at some point too. Right now, click here for Space Dandy Episode 2, and click here for last week's Anime Club. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.